So, you're done compiling your very own custom Linux kernel, but is it really secure and bug-free for actual hardware use? In this video, I'll teach you how to test your Linux kernel to make sure it is bug-free. All you need to get started is a Linux system running and also a brain. The tool we would be using is GDB, also known as the GNU debugger. GDB allows you to debug programming languages such as Fortran, C, C++, Golang, and Python. In this video, we'll focus on debugging our Linux kernel C code. But first, let me tell you why it is important to test your custom kernel before embedding into hardware. To get started, we're going to write a classic Hello World program in C, but with a little difference of tacking on a pointer address of your main function. And now, we're going to compile it using the GCC compiler. As you can see on the screen, this is how you're going to compile your Hello World program. Now go ahead and see the output. It might look something like this. Hello World and some address, and that address is specific to your kernel. Keep running the output and you would notice the address changes. This is a security feature which is really important for keeping address space of the kernel safe. Now let's say you went a little overboard and managed to disable a very important feature like the following. If you disabled this, try and run the output file again and you would notice that the memory addresses don't really change. Like you guessed, this is bad because now your programs in the kernel don't have distinct addresses, making your system very vulnerable. So, this is where GDB is really useful, to find bugs in your kernel. If we would have used GDB from the start, we would have never disabled this feature, because GDB would have warned us. Now I'm going to teach you more about GDB. Alright, let's start debugging. So, to debug, you need a couple of things. You need GDB. So, to install it on a Debian-based system, you just need to type sudo apt-get install uh, GDB. And the other thing that you need to do is compile your own kernel and make sure you have the VM Linux file. The reason why we need the VM Linux file is because um, VM Linux has all the information about our kernel that we're going to need. Um, so you can see with debug info. And one more thing that you need to do is you need to enable this following feature in your kernel config. And that feature would be config slash uh, GDB uh, scripts. Make sure you enable that and you're good to go. To start debugging, we're going to use a specific feature of GDB, and that is KCore. We're going to grab our kernel memory information. And the way you're going to do that with GDB is sudo gdb um, vm linux, okay, slash proc kcore. And kcore just contains all of our kernel memory information. So, yeah, we're going to debug some memory. Right, so you get all the scary output. We really don't, shouldn't care about anything apart from this. This is just a um, hexadecimal address storage, and then this is just some function that it's loading up. And this is boot image where your VM Linux um, was stored at. So a uh, few things about GDB. To quit out of GDB, you can type Q. To get a list of commands in GDB, you can type help. And um, there's other commands as well, but these are the basic. To read assembly, you can type lay next. Oh, lay next. Um, this is not assembly. To read, uh, so this is just basic C code. And to read assembly, you can type lay next again. And this should give you assembly code. Um, so let me just quickly refresh this. Sorry, this didn't refresh it. Let me just quit in. Um, let me just make this work again. Right, so I'm going to debug a specific portion of the kernel, and then I want you to debug something that you feel like, um, so once you have a good scope of GDB. I'm going to be debugging a specific method that I picked out before that I started this video, because I, of course, have to prepare for these videos before I record them. So the thing that I'm going to be debugging is memory map minimum adder. That's the method that I'm going to be debugging. So one of the main methods that we use to debug is called info. And info allows you to debug specific, get information about specific portions of the kernel, specific areas of the kernel, or any other code as a matter of that fact. So we can do info, and then to get memory related stuff, we can type addresses, and then memory map minimum adder. Oh, I just spelled this wrong. It's addresses. Okay, there you go. So we have the following output. Symbol, and then our method. So this is the method that we called. 
is static storage um, your static storage at address and then you get an hexadecimal value for the address now if you run this again you can see we get the same address there's no security feature here because this is GDB and what GDB does to debug is it stops your program your kernel at a certain point it's called break and you can learn about this in any other videos introducing you to GDB but this is not an introduction to GDB it's how you can use GDB to debug the kernel so I'm not gonna go over this stuff okay so we learned about info but we can do another thing and that's called print and if you're familiar with programming languages like Java, um, JavaScript or Python or C C++ not JavaScript Java has cons JavaScript has console.log C or C++ etc then you might know that print logs to the console so in our case we want to print a hexadecimal value so X hexa and we want to print a specific area of the kernel and that area is our method um, min memory map minimum address so to do that we're gonna type the following command it will be print memory map minimum uh, kernel froze this happens quite a bit um, so memory map and then we can just so right now it's just listing all the commands for me I accidentally hit tab twice by the way if you hit tab twice it's just gonna show you a list of matching commands sort of like um, uh, integrated development environments IDEs like uh, VS Code Atom the if you hit tab it auto completes for you all right I just fixed it um, it's a virtual machine so it kind of uh, glitches out sometimes because of lack of memory and by the way speaking about memory if you haven't seen my virtual memory video go ahead and check it out um, just click on my channel and you'll find it um, so anyways we were at print and then hexadecimal and then the method that we're focusing on which is memory map minimum address and if we hit enter you can see we get a storage value over here but now let me show you how good the security is for the Linux kernel you get a hexadecimal value 0x0 which is like no it's no value because if an attacker tries to get remote access to your system and they manage to do a remote GDB login they won't be able to read your system configuration which is a security feature for the kernel and it helps it's there's more nitty-gritties here and there but this is basically what it means it's not gonna show you your memory map but uh, we can actually read it um, basically we are the user of our own system so we can read it and it's using the following command it's a long command so you need to do cat proc so your memory information and we're grabbing the call sys s uh, sys system memory stuff and then we're gonna do a grep so we're gonna do some kernel magic and we're gonna do grab memory map uh, minimum address and this would actually give us the value of this and this is the actual values here we go so it's zero 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 and then etc b memory map minimum address and you can see we still don't get an actual value we just get a null uh, return for the value but here um, we only get a certain amount of that value and by the way if you want to visualize this in decimal you can you just have to press d and this will give you a decimal output and in our case you can see this is the actual value and this is the value that we're getting so this is a kernel security feature and it's really helpful now let's say you want to do this for other features you can you can do it for other um, kernel stuff as well uh, you can do it for maybe like let's do a new method let's do it for let's do it for fixed per CPU data if we can find it so we just have to do print slash X fixed um per cpu data there we go so that should give us by the way if you want to autocomplete just hit tap twice there you go so we get information about the information about fixed per cpu data so it's dollar three memory address gs base and then another hexadecimal memory address repeats 40 times so now we know look we've just debugged something we found out that um, this method fixed per CPU gets executed 40 times in the Linux kernel and then we get stack cannery and this stuff would be covered in my future videos so stay in tune for that um, and now we can also grab cat that off uh, as well 
but I didn't really know where the location for fixed per CPU data is. Um, if you guys can find that, let me know down in the comments. Anyway, so that's basically what you can do with info and print. But there is another feature I want to showcase that will help you debug the Linux kernel. And that is, remember how I told you to go into your configuration file after you've compiled your Linux kernel? And um, I've told you to enable this feature of GDB scripts. Um, so wait, hold on. Give me a second. Config GDB. So remember how I told you to enable this? Well, if you enabled it, you'd get a method called LX minus. And this method allows you to basically do anything. Basically, all you need to debug a system. For example, D message, uh, command line, CPUs that are online. So we can do CPUs and then you can get inner information about CPUs. Um, there is LX minus maybe uh, symbols that are being in your system. So that will take a lot of time. I don't want to do it right now. So let's just off uh, off that. There's device list uh, bus for memory stuff, tra treated empty. There is um, config dump. So if you want to dump configs, configuration, so config dump, uh, which you can do that. There's D message. Right now we're not getting any output because we're not loading any actual code. But if you load some kernel code, you can debug using the following. So um, there's a lot that you can do and you can of course read the assembly by lay next. Uh, no source available, that's interesting. Let's try that again. So we'll read the memory again and we'll do lay next. There we go. And then you can read, um, of course, kernel uh, assembly, which can help you reverse engineer stuff, attack the kernel, and see what's wrong with the kernel. There's sky's the limit when it comes to GDB. You can put breaks um, in certain lines of code, like um, break six, and then you can put breaks in it, and then hit C, sorry, run. And when it runs, it'll stop at that, and it'll tell you, okay, there's segmentation fault, and hit C. And there's so much things you can do uh, when it comes to this. You can see there is a breakpoint, and then you can read the memory of that, and then you can uh, go ahead and do print slash x, and then that specific method, which would be hrt timer um, slash get. Wait, hold on. Whoops. Get. Again, a kernel freeze. But you get the idea. I hope I could make myself as um, clear as possible about GDB is just a way. It's sort of a documentation inside of your kernel where you can grab a method, you can get information about it and see if it's exploiting something. So it's sort of like going inside of an inside. So it's like climbing, going deeper inside a rabbit hole to really find something that can be exploitable, something that can lead to memory leaks. And there's so much more coming into this channel.